Oh, what a bargain. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Man, those guys are making bank. I mean, yet again, like, I can see the $1,000 being worth it if you're, like, trying to network at that tournament. You know? oh, I think the practice is also very valuable. You have a high concentration of very good players. I feel like the practice is only valuable if you're on that same plane of level, you know? If you're, like, a top, like, 30, like, PGR player. Or, or like, a really, like, or, like, not Meister. Like, Meister's not PGR, I don't think. Is Meister PGR? If he's I'm not sure PGR, he he's definitely, like, PGR level. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he is. You yeah. know, I, I think... A lot of uh, players, friend groups, you know, the people that they train with are right. usually pretty good. If you have an opportunity to play with these kind of players, oh, yeah. uh, at least the certain matchups you can get very good at. Right. If, if, so if you're feeling like you really need to work on your Game & Watch matchup, then that's a great place to practice it against. I mean, you, what better Game & Watch to play than the Game & Watch of my sir, you know? What better way to play Palutena than uh, uh, play Nairo? What better way to play... Rosalina or Olimar when with the buzz, you know. Uh, I'm, there's got to be at least one snake player going. Uh, Leo. Leo's going. How yes. did I forget about Leo? Leo's going. Of course he is. Yeah, I think Salem was trying to get in uh, also to a, cause he went to, he came right. to a lot of the SoCal locals as well. Yeah. Um, sadly, he did not. It's pretty competitive here. Oh, pull, yeah. up the list. pull up the list eventually. Pull, yeah, Javi, Javi will uh, duck check us. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just go to the good old Google machine. Yeah. But, production. But while well, production gets that behind the scenes, let's get up to the on the scenes of Malgus versus Tomahawk. You know, I, I, I was about to say this seems like a really rough matchup for, for Ganon. But then I remember that every matchup seems like a rough matchup for Ganon. I but, mean, yeah, that's kind of true. But like... I feel like with Ganondorf, like, he has a really good, like, air-to-air -air game, especially with that Nair, but I feel like just getting walled out by all those projectiles, and all, like, yet again, the Hydrant sets up a barrier on the ground, and then the trampoline can just kind of just get him out of all of situations if he tries to, like, just dash attack him. So, yet again, just running into that forward smash, you know, he tries jumping over the fire Hydrant, and just can't avoid the forward smash from falling up behind it. Yeah, definitely, uh... Pac-Man doesn't have to approach, and really where Ganondorf thrives is where he's able to get uh, some kind of read off of you. Uh, and because you can play so passively as Pac-Man, that makes this matchup really difficult for Ganondorf. I mean, at least his zone-breaking tools aren't, like, the like, worst things in the world. You know, like, there's down B, which is, like, it's slow, but, I mean, it hits strong if you catch him off guard, and, like, he'll definitely knock him off stage. And, and he has dash attack that you can, like, hit couple something as well. Yeah. Apple and cut it. Rose, oh, I love the setup there. Uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta know that, like, if a, if a Pac Man fares your shield, there's a Nair coming after it, you know? Or there's, like, an Uppy or something. Like, he's not just doing one fair on your shield. So, what's kind of weird about the Pac uh, the the Fire Hydrant is that uh, whether or not the Hydrant that gets hit or moved, is percentage based. Right. So once it takes a certain amount of percent, the hydrant will move. Uh, but the knockback is based on the knockback of the move. So if you hit it with a weak attack and it already has like 13%, and let's say 14% is the amount where it gets hit, uh, then the hydrant will move very slowly because it got hit by a weak attack. The trajectory matters as well. So you'll see Pac-Man go for Dare sometimes because it sends it at a very high arc. And we have a... Yeah. Unfortunate SC from all this in part. I mean, yet again, he wanted to go low and, like, avoid, you know, Pac-Man. Because, I mean, Pac-Man has a lot of setups where, like, he can really just hit you on ledge, especially with that forward smash. It's a very long-lasting hitbox, right. too. And, you know, there's projectiles to worry about. So, yet again, it's just a really sh tough matchup for Ganondorf to, like, get in on Pac-Man. Definitely. Uh, and just throwing that Hydra in front of uh, Ganon, it makes it so much harder for him to approach. Um, Pac-Man's just love to put that out there because it forces you to jump right. uh, and deal with it. Yeah. And the water can push you away, give Pac-Man stage control. Right. 
I feel like the fact that Pac-Man forward smash is both a long-lasting hitbox. So, I, like, a lot of people, like, if they try to forward smash it, they would have so much end lag on the move that, like, you would get punished for it. But because it's an active hitbox for, like, pretty much as long as it's out, like, you're not going to get punished for hitting a forward smash with Pac-Man. So close for the F smash there. Uh, the Tala Hawk is the name of our Pac-Man here. He yeah, has just enough time to shield it. And again, Tomahawk just really trying to set up all these traps. And, you know, he read the roll, but unfortunately wasn't really spaced in a position to really punish it. And, oh, my God. I kind of wish Malgus realized that, you know, Pac-Man definitely overextended on the bottom of the screen there. And could have gone down, taken the last trampoline jump, and just really get to Pac-Man, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're glad you got something off that punish because it sent Pac-Man off stage and it forces, you into, forces Pac-Man into a situation where he has to... You know, gives you an opportunity to make a read or something like that with Ganon, which is really what uh, Magdalus needs to capitalize on here. I love what he did there. He kind of used the momentum from the fire hydrant to push, propel his back air to like hit Malgus. Malgus wasn't expecting that. And you know what? Malgus cleaning up that stock nicely. You know, definitely doing way better than he was in the first game. I feel like he's kind of figured out like, okay, this is Pac Man trick. Like, let me. Like adapt to like that, and let me see if I can throw out my own tricks. And he got hit by the, <laughs> the fire hydrant because it was still bouncing. It still stays active for a while. If it clanks with a hitbox, though, it uh, stops being an active hitbox. Like, yeah. yeah, that jumping uh, side B is a, definitely a very favored tool from a lot of uh, command grapplers. I know, like, it's the one likes to do that a lot. Uh, you know, or anybody that has like really like long distance side B, uh, uh, Bayonetta likes to do that a lot, where they'll side B on the stage because it's like throwing out an active like move, so that like it's different from just like the standard like oh normal get up or jump, and so when it's throwing out an actual move, it can kind of make your landing at the stage basically safer. Yes, and a lot of players are thinking about what kind of ledge trapping they're going to do, and they sometimes they're not expecting that. Well. I just. No, Tomahawk really just standing there in neutral, realizing that, okay, Ganondorf doesn't have anything to hit me with at this point, so let me just throw out the forward smash because he's going to land right in front of me. So going for the dare off of that Galaga combo, though, and you know what? Tom oh, Tomahawk just getting called out right there with yeah. that up That up just uh, snatching him out of the sky and taking that stock. Uh, this is, again, like you said, a much closer match up. And I liked how Tomahawk kind of learned. Like, he said, like, okay, you know what? I've been kind of, like, approaching him. And so, you know, Malgus was just waiting for him to kind of, like, land with a fair or an air and just whack him with that forward smash. Yeah. And that orange is just so good for catching dashes. I mean, we saw uh, Tomahawk get a lot of those uh, snipes well. Right. Oh, but no jump. Dash. Oh, he's, he's yeah. on his last stop here. This could be it. Magnus. Could be on into losers already. Oh yeah, so the opening hitbox of that a B or the the up tilt it like sends them the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. because the yeah the opening hitbox of the up smash will push you up into the actual strong hitbox, the ghost. Right. Uh, 